Known for its reputation of being a rather violent sport, especially throughout the past decades, it's not surprising that some on-ice actions have resulted in fines, criminal charges, and even jail time, as some players of the past have previously taken things too far, while using their sticks to purposefully injure their opponents. In this video, we'll be taking a walk, or should I say skate, while we examine the most recent three incidents that sparked controversy, lawsuits, and most importantly, criminal charges. And with that, here are three NHL players that face charges for their actions on ice. Our first altercation brings us back to the dawn of the millennium in 2000. The antagonist here just so happened to be known enforcer and Gretzky's protector, Marty McSorley. McSorley was known back in his day to be a loose cannon that could go off in an instant on opponents. During his last season in the league, while suiting up for Boston, after dropping the gloves with his longtime rival Donald Brashear, McSorley, who had lost this tussle, didn't appreciate Brashear rubbing it in. This paired with the fact that Brashear had caused goaltender Byron Defoe to be hauled off on a stretcher following a brutal collision was enough for McSorley to want to settle the score for good. But as Bashir refused to own up to his actions, this angered McSorley to the point of no return. With just a few seconds left in the contest, McSorley raised his stick with intent and struck Bashir on the side of the head with force, so much so that this caused the forward to collapse instantly while losing his helmet in the process. Bashir, who had to be wheeled off the ice on a stretcher, suffered from a grade A concussion, memory loss, and a brief loss of consciousness. The only thing I remember is jumping on the ice without much time left, Brashear recalled. Not long after the horrific events, the NHL dealt McSorley a 23-game suspension, which was later amended to one year. But aside from missing out on around $100,000 from the rest of the season's pay, the finances were the least of McSorley's problems, as he also faced legal ones. Following the brutal attack, a Vancouver police officer filed an incident report, which then sparked an investigation, which later caused McSorley to wind up in court. The charge he was facing was assault with a deadly weapon and an 18-month stay in a prison cell. During the trial, the defense argued that violence is expected in hockey and that McSorley was aiming for Bashir's shoulder initially. But unfortunately for McSorley, the judge didn't see it that way, as he dealt the perpetrator a guilty verdict. While he wasn't put behind bars, McSorley was given 18 months probation instead. Bashir was later able to return to play and remained in the NHL for close to a decade following the incident. However, However, McSorley wasn't so lucky, as he never played another game in the league thereafter. Around a decade prior to the mcsorley brashear altercation, North Stars forward at the time, Dino Cicerelli, was the most recent guilty party, looking back as far as legality is concerned. As in January of 1988, while playing in a regular season game at Maple Leaf Gardens, Cicerelli, who had been adamant about his frustration with not getting calls as a star player, had finally reached his breaking point and decided to let rookie defenseman Luke Richardson have it after receiving multiple hits after the whistle at the hands of Richardson. And with just a few remaining minutes in the middle frame of play, Cicerelli wielded his stick, striking Richardson on multiple occasions in the head, until restrained by the nearest official. After receiving a game misconduct and exiting the contest, Cicerelli pleaded his case post-game while saying, the same guy got me twice. He struck me in the head and then cross-checked me into the boards, and nothing got called. If they call everything and call it early, then this stuff doesn't happen, he says. Well, regardless of the fact that Richardson received no injury, the NHL still took action and dealt to Sorelli a 10-game suspension. But it wasn't just the league's concern anymore. A warrant has been taken out for the arrest of Dino Cicerelli. The charge is assault under Section 245 of the Criminal Code. As Toronto police issued a warrant for his arrest on charges of assault. For his actions, Cicerelli, aside from the conviction, was given a $1,000 fine and was made to stay for one day in jail. This was the first time that an NHL player was detained due to on ice actions. As Judge Sidney Harris stated, it's time now that a message go out from the courts that violence in a hockey game or in any other circumstances is not acceptable in our society. Following his time served, Cicerelli's on ice career continued as he remained active for close to a decade after, before being indicted to the Hockey Hall of Fame in 2010.
And the final bout of controversy that we have to discuss is the most recent on this list and took place in March of 2004. As the Colorado Avalanche faced the Vancouver Canucks, there was some unfinished business to attend to, as the last contest between the two in the Mile High City was a catalyst for this act of violence to occur. Steve Moore decided to elbow Marcus Naslin intentionally. Head coach Mark Crawford, who was just as angry as the team afterwards, had this to say about the incident. That was a cheap shot uh, by a young kid on a, on a captain, leading scorer in the league, and we get no call. We get no call. I mean, that is ridiculous. Seeing it largely as a lack of respect and blatant disregard for the safety of the opponent, the Canucks, while in their home barn, had something sinister brewing behind the scenes. After previously facing Matt Cook in the contest in the ring, Vancouver wasn't done, letting Moore pay for his actions. In the final period of play, as the Avalanche were up 8-2, to two, Todd Bertuzzi began hovering around Moore, waiting for his opportunity to strike. But after asking Moore to drop the gloves, Bertuzzi decided to take a more stealth approach and struck Moore from behind in the back of the head. Moore, who instantly fell on impact after loss of consciousness, had to be escorted off ice on a stretcher. Due to the fact that multiple players piled up onto the victim, he sustained three fractured neck vertebrae, facial cuts, along with a concussion. Unfortunately for Moore, this was the last game he ever was able to play. After a four-month investigation, it was then revealed that Bertuzzi was being charged with assault, causing bodily harm, and was facing up to one and a half years behind bars. After accepting a plea bargain, Bertuzzi then pled guilty and was given a conditional discharge that required, along with it, 80 hours of community service to be completed along with a year's probation. But this wasn't the end of the legal repercussions for the forward, as Moore, who wasn't satisfied, filed a lawsuit in Colorado against Bertuzzi and the Vancouver Canucks. But this time, the charges didn't stick and the case was thrown out. After other attempted lawsuits, the previous opponents were finally able to settle their differences outside of court in 2011, but the details have never been disclosed. Despite the fact that Moore was never able to play NHL hockey again, Bertuzzi, after serving technically a 17-month suspension due to the lockout, was officially reinstated in August of 2005 and played his last season with the Detroit Red Wings before retiring in 2015. 